there are five income heads salary house property capital gains business and profession and income from other sources let's understand business income from trading first let's take a look at trading activity it can be divided into delivery based trading in case you purchase an equity share from stock exchange and hold it for at least one day it can be classified as equity delivery trading intraday trading is when you purchase and sell on the same day and derivatives is the trading of contracts that derive the value from the underlying asset such as equity commodity or currency trading in futures and options are considered as derivatives trading income from trading activities can be divided into capital gains income or business income for income tax purposes usually income from delivery based trading is treated as capital gains when std that is security transaction tax is paid like in case of listed equity shares and mutual funds it is a long term capital gains if sold after 12 months and short term capital gains if sold within 12 months in case std is not paid like for unlisted equity shares the holding period is 24 months whereas intraday and derivatives trading are treated as business income business income can be further classified into speculative business income equity intraday trading is considered as speculative business income since it is done without taking actual delivery of equity shares and non speculative business income since derivatives trading is used for hedging or taking delivery of the underlying asset it is treated as non speculative business income in some situations trader can report delivery based equity trading under income from business and profession considering it is classified as a non speculative business income and same treatment is followed for the subsequent years as per the cbdt circular issued in february 2016 the treatment of income from the sale of shares should be consistent each year let's take a look at tax treatment when std is paid on equity shares and mutual funds capital gains are taxed at special rates short term capital gains are taxed at 15% and long term capital gains above 1 lakh are taxed at 10% however business income arising from trading activity is taxed at the applicable income tax slab rate finance minister nirmala sitaraman introduced the new income tax regime in budget 2020 it allows the taxpayer to choose between the old and new income tax slab rates from financial year 2020 21 onwards under the new regime there are seven income tax slab rates and you cannot claim deductions however under the old income tax regime there are four income tax slab rates and you can continue to claim all deductions individuals with business income who have opted for the new income tax regime have once in a lifetime option to switch back to the old income tax regime and continue to avail deductions and tax exemptions however once this option of reverting to the old income tax regime is exercised the taxpayer cannot opt for the new income tax regime in the future years Now let's see how turnover is calculated. Turnover calculation varies for delivery based equity trading, intraday and futures and options. Contract turnover usually shown in trading ledger is different from trading turnover as per the Income Tax Act. The trading turnover for delivery based equity trading is the sum of sales value. For equity intraday and futures, it is the absolute profit. Whereas for options, it is the absolute profit plus the premium on sale of options. Absolute profit is the sum of absolute value of trade wise profit and loss. Let's look at some examples. A trader did the following intraday trades during the financial year. To calculate the realized profit and loss, we subtract the buy value from the sell value. The total realized PNL of the trader is a loss of 4 lakh for financial year 1920. After adjusting the realized profit and loss with a transfer expense of 50000 such as brokerage transaction charges etc we will get the net profit and loss that is a loss of 4 lakh 50000 trading turnover for intraday equity is the absolute profit the absolute profit is the sum of the absolute values of profit and loss of the trades that is we ignore the positive and negative signs of the profit or loss making the total trading turnover to be 8 lakh 73060 Let's look at another case where the trader undertook the following FNO trades during the financial year. The realized PNL is the sale value minus buy value. This will make the total realized loss to be 4 lakh. Further adjusting it with the transaction expense of 50000, we get a net loss of 4 lakh 50000. In case of futures, the trading turnover will be the absolute profit. However, trading turnover for options is the sum of absolute profit plus the premium paid on sale of options. 
After adding the futures turnover and options turnover, the total turnover for FNO trades in this case will be 2 crore 4 lakh 833. Now let's understand the treatment of losses from trading activity. You can set off the speculative loss like from equity intraday trading against other speculative business profit and carry forward the remaining speculative business loss to the next four financial years, which can be set off against future incomes from speculative business activity only. You can set off non-speculative business loss like from futures and options trading against any other income except income under the head salary and carry forward the remaining non-speculative loss to the next eight financial years, which can be set off against future income from business, including both speculative business income and non-speculative business income. To carry forward the loss, you need to report them while filing your income tax return. Keep in mind that you cannot carry forward the loss in case you miss the income tax return filing due date and file a belated return. A trader can claim all the expenses that are directly related to trading activity such as rent expense if the office is in a rented premise, insurance expense for insurance premium paid for assets used for business purpose such as computer systems etc, repairs and maintenance paid for laptop, furniture or any other equipment used for business purposes, office supplies such as stationery, printing, refreshment expense etc. Electricity expense paid for office can be claimed as an expense. If you are working from home, you can claim the electricity expense proportionately. Telephone, mobile and internet expense can also be claimed as business expense. Membership fees paid for trading platforms. For example, you can claim the membership fee paid for becoming a member of a trader club. However, you cannot claim fees paid for membership at a golf club, etc. for recreational purposes. Legal and professional fees. Any fee paid to a professional for their service such as for tax return filing, tax audit, legal advice, consultancy service, etc. is deductible as a valid expense. Books and subscription for material related to trading. Depreciation, that is claiming the cost of the asset as an expense over the life of the asset. As per the Income Tax Act, you cannot claim the cost of an asset as an expense. However, you can claim the deduction on the asset as an expense. Finance cost, if you take on a loan for your trading business, you can claim the interest paid on such loan as a deductible expense. Trading expenses include brokerages, turnover fees, clearing expense, exchange transaction tax, stamp duty, GST, STT, etc. Any other business expense that is directly related to your trading business can be claimed as a valid expense. You can also claim deductions for certain taxes paid such as security transaction tax, which is paid on securities trading, that is equity shares and equity mutual funds, commodities transaction tax paid on commodities trading, Stamp duty, which is usually paid on transfer of securities. GST paid on trading expense. To claim all of these expenses, you need to have details and proofs like receipts, invoices, etc. You cannot claim personal expenses like fines, penalties, tax paid on income or cash payments above 20,000 and TDS that is collected but not deposited. Presumptive taxation scheme was introduced to give relief to small taxpayers from maintaining books of accounts and from getting their accounts audited. A trader can pay tax on the income declared at a predefined rate. When the trading turnover is up to 2 crore and profit is more than or equal to 6% of the turnover, the trader has an option to opt for presumptive taxation under Section 44AD. The prescribed rate for digital transactions is 6% of the turnover under Section 44AD, in which case the trader cannot claim expenses and they have to file ITR 4 before 31st July. In case the trader opts out of the presumptive taxation scheme under Section 44AD in the future years, they cannot opt for presumptive taxation scheme for the next five years. Up to financial year 1920, when trading turnover is up to 1 crore, tax audit is applicable if the profit is less than 6% of the turnover or total income is above the basic exemption limit and not applicable if profit is more than or equal to 6%. In case your trading turnover is between 1 crore to 2 crore, tax audit is applicable. If the profit is less than 6% of the turnover, or when the profit is more than or equal to 6% of the turnover, the trader has not opted for presumptive taxation under Section 4480. Tax audit is not applicable when profit is more than or equal to 6% of the turnover and trader opts for the presumptive scheme under Section 4480. And tax audit is mandatory when trading turnover is above 2 crore. As per the announcement in Budget 2020 from financial year 2021 onwards, when trading turnover is up to 5 crore, tax audit is applicable when profit is less than 6% of the turnover and not applicable when profit is more than or equal to 6% of the turnover. 
However, tax audit is mandatory when training turnover is above 5 crore. Let's look at a few cases to understand it better. Let's say the trading turnover for an intraday trader is 1,50,000 for financial year 1920. We derive this trading turnover from the absolute profit. The trader incurred a loss of 30,000 and earned a salary of 2,50,000. In this case, tax audit is not applicable since the trading turnover is less than 1 crore and total income is less than basic exemption limit. In another case of an FNO trader, let's say the trading turnover is 2 crore 10 lakh for financial year 1920 and the loss is 20 lakh. The trader also earned a salary of 10 lakh during the financial year. In this case, tax audit is applicable since the trading turnover is more than 2 crore and has carry forward losses. Finally, let's take an example where a trader has a trading turnover of 1 crore 20 lakh. In this case, the profit for FNO trading is 8 lakh which is more than 6% of the turnover and the trader also has a salary income of 7 lakh. The trader can opt for presumptive taxation scheme under section 44AD, in which case the taxable income from business will be 6% of the turnover or actual profit, whichever is higher. In this case, since the trader has opted for presumptive taxation scheme, tax audit will not be applicable. When filing income tax return with business income, you need documents like trading statements, proof of trading expense, bank statements, ITR filed in the previous years for bought forward losses, along with other statements like Form 26AS, PAN, Aadhaar, etc. A trader should maintain books of accounts under Section 44AA like sales, purchase, expense ledger, etc. in a manner that the income tax officer can derive the taxable income of the trader. Most of the statements can be downloaded from your broker. The due date to file ITR is 31st July if tax audit is not applicable and 30th September in case tax audit is applicable. Due to the COVID-19 situation, the Finance Ministry has extended the due dates for assessment year 2021 as follows. From financial year 2021 onwards, in case tax audit is applicable, the due date to file tax audit report by the CA is 30th September, but the taxpayer can file ITR until 31st October. Taxpayer with business income are required to file ITR 3. You may also be required to submit audit report in case tax audit is applicable, in which case filing ITR with digital signature certificate is mandatory. You can show all of this information while filing your income tax return. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more such videos. We are Quico on a mission to simplify taxes for all.